We are so glad that you have joined us again today. I am your host, Benjamin Ng, and I welcome you back to our fourth presentation of our prophecy series, Homeward Bound, brought to you by Advent Productions. The last time we were together, Rain shared with us about how we can find true peace, the pursuit of peace. Today, we're going to talk about life on trial. We're going to look into the books of Daniel and Revelation, because if there is going to be a judgment, I want to be ready, don't you? Rain is going to share with us how we can be ready today for that trial. We're so glad that you have joined us for Homeward Bound. We welcome you once again. And by the way, if you've missed any of the previous presentations, feel free to go to our page and look for the past night's videos. And if you want to catch up with the free gifts that we have been giving out, just fill out the form by clicking on the link in the description below. We will get those gifts out to you as soon as we can. Now we hope that you'll be blessed as Rain Clement continues to break down the Word of God to each and every one of us. We are now going to look at Life on Trial. Good evening, everyone. I want to welcome you to the fourth night of our Prophecy Series. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for being here. Now, last night, if you were here with us, we discovered a very important truth. We learned that we are saved by grace. We learned about the plan of salvation. We learned about God's love. And we learned about how You know, when we accept Christ, we invite Him into our hearts and we experience His grace and His salvation that gives us peace, gives us true and personal peace in our lives. Now, this evening, we are going to learn another important and serious truth as well. But before we go into the message, as usual, I'd like to invite you to bow your heads with me as we pray together. So let's pray now. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for giving us this time once again that we can come together, we can open your word, we can listen to your voice speaking to us. And Lord, I just pray that you would lead us and guide us in this time. I pray for the Holy Spirit to be here. I pray for wisdom, Lord. May you take control of our hearts and our minds. And I just pray that you would speak to all of us at this time. Thank you so much, Lord, for hearing and for answering our prayers. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, friends, we are truly living in the, ju- in the judgment hour. The Bible mentions the word judgment more than 1,000 times. And in the book of Revelation, we find these very words. In Revelation chapter 14, And verse 7, the Bible says this, The hour of His judgment is come. So you see, friends, we are truly living in the judgment hour. We are living in the time of judgment even right now. And in the judgment, Christ is revealed as fully just and fully loving in the way He handles the sin problem. You know, in the judgment, each case is decided either for life or for death. And the entire universe recognizes that God has done everything possible to save every human being so that they can be saved, so that they can be free. And friends, in the judgment, God's heart of love asks this question, is there anything more that I could have done to save my people? And friends, the answer is, there is nothing more. Christ has done all He can to save us. Love has done all all it could. And the entire universe sings with one accord. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. 
to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. You see, friends, God's matchless love is revealed in the judgment. All of heaven pauses to consider the choices of each individual living on this earth. Each choice that is made in the light of God's incredible desire to save them. And today's message, we will learn about the judgment. We will learn about God's love through the judgment. We will learn about His mercy, His justice. And we will learn about how important it is for us to make the right choices in our lives. As we go from day to day, how important it is for us to make the right choices, to make the right decisions. Well, friends, let's begin by looking at the judgment scene. How does the Bible describe the judgment scene? Well, let's go to the book of Daniel chapter 7, verses 9 to 10. The Bible says this, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. Here in Daniel chapter 7, we see the judgment scene taking place in heaven. Now, I want you to notice those words. I want you to notice how the Bible describes the judgment scene. It says that thrones were put in place. The Ancient of Days was seated. Thousands upon thousands stood before him. The court was seated. The judgment was set and the books were opened. You see, when we look at the judgment scene, friends, the Bible paints us this picture, paints us this picture that all of heaven is interested in this judgment. The whole host of heaven are involved in the judgment scene. Now, why are they interested? Why is it that every single being in heaven is involved and interested in this judgment? It's because the destiny of the entire human race will be settled forever. And also because God's throne is at stake. The honor of God's throne and His kingdom is at stake. And that's why they're interested. That's why they're watching. That's why they are looking with in intense interest to see what will be the outcome of the judgment. But friends, who is being judged? Who is being judged in this judgment? Well, how universal is God's judgment? Notice what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and verse 10. The Bible says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. You see, the Bible says that we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Therefore, all mankind is being judged. Every single human being that has lived and is living is being judged judged. We are all involved in this judgment. But friends, what else does the Bible tell us about this judgment? Well, notice the book of Romans chapter 14 and verse 12. The Bible says this, So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. See, the Bible says here that we shall give account of ourselves to God. You see, in the judgment, each person will be accountable to God for himself. Each person will be responsible for his or her own actions. And this tells us two things. In the judgment, we will not be held accountable for the actions of someone else. Neither can we blame others for the actions that we did. So in the judgment, we can never make an excuse and say that I did this or I did that because of this person. No, 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 friends. In the judgment, we are responsible for our own actions. In the judgment, it is every man for himself. Each man will give account of his own actions. So we can never put the blame on someone else. You see, in the judgment, friends, our lives will be on trial. 
But how does God carry out this judgment? Well, let's go back to Daniel chapter 7, verse 10. And let's see what the Bible tells us. It says, A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were open. Notice what the Bible says here. After the judgment was set, it says the books were opened. So God will judge us using those books. He will judge us based on what is written in those books. But then maybe you're asking the question, what are those books? What are those books that will be used in the judgment? Well, let's take a look at those books right now. What is the first book that provides an accurate description of our lives in the judgment? What is that first book that will be used? Let's go to Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. The Bible says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So friends, what is the first book that will be used in the judgment? It's called the book of life. And just by the name of this book, you can tell that this is a good book. It sounds like this is a book for those who love God. It sounds like a book for those who will inherit eternal life. So this is a good book. Well, let's learn more about this book. What else does the Bible tell us about the book of life? Whose names will be written in the book of life? Let's go to the, let's go to the book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 3. It says, And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow labors, whose names are in the book of life. So notice here that Paul is speaking and he says that those who labored with him, those who did the gospel work with him, their names are found where? In the book of life. So friends, based on this verse, who will be found in the book of life? It is committed Christians. Christians who are involved in the work of God. Christians who are involved in the gospel work. Christians who spend their time preaching and teaching and winning souls for Jesus. Christians that are working for God and hastening His coming. They are found in the book of life. So you see, friends, if we want our names to be in this book, we must be involved in the gospel work. We must be involved in preaching the gospel. We must be involved in winning souls for Jesus. That is a requirement that God has placed upon each of His followers today. Well, what else do we know about the book of life? Let's go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 5. Who else is found in this book? It says, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. So who else are found in the book of life? It is those who overcome. They will be found in the book of life. Overcome what? Overcome sin in their life. You see, friends, only those who have a victorious life over sin, will be found in the book of life. But you see, I want you to understand something. It is possible for us to be found in the book of life, for for our names to be written in the book of life, and then later on removed. Why am I saying that? Because in this verse, Jesus says that if we overcome, He will not blot out our names from the book of life. That means it's possible that if we do not overcome, Jesus will blot our names out of the book of life. You see, friends, you know what this verse tells us? This verse tells us that just because we were saved once doesn't mean we are saved forever. There is no such thing as once saved, always saved. 
we can overcome one day and be found in the book of life and then not overcome another day and be removed from the book of life. We must overcome on a continual basis. We must continue to overcome if we want our names to, be, to remain in the book of life. See, friends, it is very important for us to overcome our sins daily for us to have a victorious life over our sin. And yes, only Jesus can help us to live that life, but we need to, to go to Him for help so that we can live a victorious life, so that we can continue to overcome sin. Because you see, friends, without Christ, we are dead in sin. We are hopeless we have no hope of overcoming. Notice what the Bible says in Romans 6, 23. The wage, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, we have no possibility of living eternally without Christ. When we come to Jesus, we receive the gift of eternal life from Him, and our names are placed in the book of life. So friends, this is the first book. It is the book of life. It is a good book. It's, for, it's a book for those who overcome. It's a book for those who are involved in the gospel work, who are doing the work for God, who are winning souls for Him. So that's the first book. It is the book of life. Well, what is the second book that God will use in the judgment? Let's go to the book of Malachi chapter 3 and verse 16. The Bible says this, Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened, and heard it, and the book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord, and that taught upon his name. Friends, so notice that this is a book of remembrance. This is the second book. But what does God record or record in this book of remembrance? Notice Nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 14. The Bible says this, Remember me, O my God, concerning this, and wipe not out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for the offices thereof. So what is written in the book of remembrance? It is the good deeds that we have done. God will make a record of all the good deeds that we have done. And his record books reveal what we actually are. You see, we have to understand that when it comes to the judgment, there is no pretense or make-believe with God. Everything that God sees, he writes. Everything that God watches, he writes down. God has a faithful record of our lives. And if we are found in the book of life, then all our good deeds will be found in the book of remembrance as well. All our good deeds will be recorded in the Book of Remembrance. So this is the second book. It is called the Book of Remembrance. The first book is the Book of Life. It's a good book. Second book is the Book of Remembrance. This is also a good book. It's for those who have good deeds. It's for those who are faithful to God. It's for those who are obedient to Him. Well, let's take a look at the third and final book. What is the third and final book? Let's go to Isaiah 65, 6 and 7. It says, Behold, it is written before me. I will not keep silence, but will recompense, even recompense into their bosom. Your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, saith the Lord which have burned incense upon the mountains and blasphemed me upon the hills. Therefore will I measure their former work into their bosom. Friends, what is being written down here? Notice that our, it's the sins that we have committed. That is what is being written down. And it's really our sins that are being recorded. But is it really true? Is it really true that God keeps a record of our sins? Yes, He does. Notice another verse, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 22. The Bible says this, For though thou wash thee with neither, 
and take thee much soap, yet thine iniquity is marked before me, saith the Lord God. You see, friends, the Bible is very clear that God records our sin. He marks our sins. The stain of our guilt is before the Lord. Our sin is marked before Him. You see, all our sins and our wrongdoings are also written down in the book of sin. It's not only our good deeds, but also the wrong deeds that we have done. You see, when we sin, our names are placed in the book of sin. And our names are automatically removed from the book of life and the book of remembrance. So friends, it is possible that today you may be found in the book of life, in the book of remembrance. But when you sin, the minute you sin, you are placed in the book of sin. Your good deeds are not remembered and you are taken out from the book of life. So you see, friends, it is very important for us to continually overcome sin, to continually go to Jesus so that our names can remain in the book of life, so that our names can remain in the book of remembrance. So these are the three books. As we recap, the three books that are used in the judgment are these, the book of life, the book of remembrance, and the book of sin. And you see, friends, through these books, God is watching and recording every single thing we do, whether it's good or whether it's evil. Every thought that we have, every word that we speak, every action that we perform, God is watching. He's recording everything down in the books. And you see, friends, nothing can remain hidden from God. We may think that we can hide from God, but we really cannot. Notice what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 5. Therefore judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. You see, the Bible is very clear. God will bring to light the hidden things of darkness. You see, we may think that no one sees us when we are committing our private sins, when we are doing our wrong deeds alone. Right? We're all alone. We're the only ones there. There's no one else. There's no one watching. No one knows. I'm all by myself. Only I know. But friends, we must remember that God is watching us all the time. His presence is always with us. He's recording every single thing we do, every word we speak, every thought we have. You see, friends, we may hide from others, but we can never hide from God. The Bible says that God will bring to light all the hidden things of darkness. In the judgment, our lives will be placed in the limelight and we will, God will be able to reveal every single thing that we have done. So friends, you know what this tells us? This tells us that we need to live our lives differently. Knowing that we are always in the presence of God, we must live our lives differently. But we should never live our lives differently because of fear. No, it should be because of love. It must be because we love Him, we want to obey Him, we want to be faithful to Him, and so we live a different life. But friends, we must remember that we are in the judgment, and every single thing we do is being recorded. But now that we know what books are being used in the judgment, let's find out who are the participants of the judgment. Let's look at the first participant. Let's go to the, to the book of John chapter 5 verse 22. The Bible says this, For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Now, the first participant that we see here is the judge. And who is the judge? It's Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that the Father has entrusted all judgment unto the Son. This tells us that Jesus is the judge. 
Let's also go to 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10. The Bible says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. You see, friends, the Bible says that we must all appear before the judgment seat of who? Of Christ. You see, Christ is the judge. Christ is the one who will be judging us. So that's the first participant, the judge, Jesus Christ. Well, let's look at the second participant. Who is our defense attorney in this judgment? Let's go to the book of 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So see here, the Bible says that we have an advocate. And who is that advocate? It's Jesus Christ, the righteous one. You see, Jesus is the one who will defend us. And yes, Jesus is both our defense attorney and our judge. He both defends us and also judges us. Now, you may be wondering why. Why is it that Jesus is both the defense attorney and also the judge? Well, it's simple, friends. You see, Jesus longs for every single person to win in this judgment, to be saved. You see, in the judgment, we must understand that Christ is for us, never against us. And Christ is both the defense attorney and also the judge because He is giving us every opportunity to win in this judgment. All we have to do, friends, is choose Jesus. You see, if we choose Jesus, we already won because He is both our defense attorney and also our judge. But Jesus wants every single person to win in this judgment. He wants every single human being on this world to be saved. So that is the second participant. It's Jesus, our advocate. Jesus, our defense attorney. Well, who is the third and final participant in this judgment? Who accuses us? Who is our accuser? Notice Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. Sorry, in Hebrews 7.25, the Bible also says, talking about Jesus, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. So you see, friends, once again, Jesus is able to save anyone who comes to him. Anyone that is willing to be saved, God is able to save that person. Now let's go and look at this final participant. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12 and verse 10. The Bible says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. So friends, who is our accuser? It is none other than the devil. It's none other than Satan. And the Bible calls the devil the accuser of our brethren. You know, the devil is the one who accuses us before God day and night. He is the one that is condemning us every single day. But when the devil condemns us in the judgment, what does God tell the devil? Well, Let's go to the book of Zechariah, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says this, And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? So what does God do when the devil condemns us? The Bible says that the Lord rebukes Satan. Now, why does God, why does he do this? Why is it that God rebukes Satan? Well, let's continue to verses 3 and 4, and you will get the picture. 
I want you to notice what the Bible tells us about Joshua the high priest. Notice what kind of clothing he is wearing and what is it that God gives him. Let's go to verses 3 and 4. The Bible says, Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And, and he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. You see, what kind of cloth, uh, clothing did Joshua the high priest have? He had filthy garments. And what did this represent? It represented his sin. It represented his unrighteousness. But what did God do? He took away those filthy garments and God gave him a change of raiment, gave him a new pair of clothing. And this represents his righteousness, covering the sinful life of Joshua the high priest. And you see, friends, God does the same thing for us, even in the judgment. As we commit our lives to Christ, you know, Satan will continually condemn us. He will continually accuse us before God. He accuses us for all the sins that we have done in our lives. Well, what does Jesus do? Jesus stands in our behalf and he rebukes the devil. Our Savior takes away our filthy garments and he gives us a robe of righteousness. He clothes us with His own righteousness. And you see, friends, if we are covered with the blood of Jesus today, if we receive His righteousness, then God will tell Satan that we are not guilty. God will tell the devil that He died for us. God will tell the devil that He has no accusation against us because we are without sin because Christ has cleansed our sin. And you see, friends, the devil can have no argument against us in the judgment, but only if we choose Christ, only if our sins are covered by His blood, only if we receive His righteousness in our lives. And friends, we can win in the judgment. All we have to do today is choose the right side, is to choose the side of Jesus. Friends, which side will you be on? Which side will you choose today? Now that we know who are the participants in the judgment, let's find out how detailed will the judgment be? How deeply will it probe into my individual life? Notice what the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 12, 36 and 37. It says, But I say unto you, that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. See, the Bible is very clear. We will be condemned or judged by what we speak. Yes, our words are very important. Every careless and idle word that we speak, the Bible says, will be taken into account. You see, we must not think that it's only the big things that will matter. No, to God, it's all the same. God looks at the small things just as much as the big things. They are of equal importance. And many times, friends, it's the small things that matter the most like our words. You may not think that the words you speak are important compared to other big things like robbing a bank or, or killing, but our words can determine whether we are lost or saved in the judgment. Friends, we have to be so careful about the words we speak today because our words can determine our destiny. Our words can determine if we will be saved or lost. But just imagine that if God is watching every word we speak, 
God is being very detailed in the judgment. Notice also Ecclesiastes chapter 12, 13 and 14. The Bible says this. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So you see, the Bible says that God will bring every work into judgment, even the secret acts that we have in our lives. You see, God will do a complete investigation of our lives in the judgment time. And what are we called to do? In that verse, what are we called to do? Knowing that we are in the time of judgment, the Bible says, let us hear the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and give, uh, fear God and keep His commandments. See, friends, we are called in this judgment time to be faithful. We are called to be obedient. We are called to live our lives differently, knowing that our lives are on trial. You know, we must live our lives as if God is standing right next to us because, friends, He really is. Many times we don't realize that. But if we only realize that God's presence is always there, that the angels are, are always there, perhaps it will help us to live our lives differently. It will help us to realize that we need a change in our lives. But let's talk more about the judgment. When God judges us, does He consider the circumstances in our lives? Well, let's see what the Bible tells us. Let's go to John chapter 9, verse 41. The Bible says this, Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. Notice also Luke 12, 48. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. You see, in the judgment, God is a fair and just God. God will judge us according to what we know. You see, God is not an evil and cruel judge that is just waiting to punish us. You know, He's not there just looking at the books and just, you know, waiting to point out our sins, just waiting to punish us, just waiting to tell us, see, this is what you did. No, friends. God is merciful. He wants us to be saved. He wants us to win in this judgment. But everything that God records down, every single detail that He has of our life is faithful and true. His books, the books in heaven, reveal what we actually are. God is faithful and true. He is merciful and just. You see, there is no pretense or make-believe with God. In the judgment, it is all right. It is all true because God is a faithful and true judge. But now let's come to the question. What is the purpose of this judgment? Why does God need to have this judgment? Why must He investigate our lives? Why? What is the purpose? Well, let's go back to Daniel chapter 7, and let's look at verse 14 now. Daniel 7 and verse 14, the Bible says, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So what is the purpose of the judgment according to this verse? It's so that God can receive a dominion, glory, and kingdom. But here's the question, if God is to receive a kingdom, what is He really receiving? In order to have a kingdom, what do you need? People. So God needs people to be part of His kingdom. 
You cannot have a kingdom without people. And so through the judgment, God is investigating the lives of, the, of all people, of every human being, to determine who is worthy to be part of His kingdom. Who is worthy to inherit His kingdom. God is investigating each person's life to determine just that. God is looking for people to be part of His kingdom. And through the judgment, He will determine just who those people are. But let's also go to Revelation chapter 12, verses 10 and 11. Why else does God need to have the judgment? The Bible says, And I heard a loud voice in heaven is saying, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of His Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. You see, friends, through the judgment, God wants to prove that the accusations of the devil is, is not true. That his accusations are false. And how will he prove that? It's because he will present a people that are faithful. A people that have overcome. A people that love him and want to be part of his kingdom. And so God will show the whole world that he truly is faithful and true. And the devil is a liar. But friends, what is God's mercy? Sorry, what is God's standard in the judgment? Let's go to the book of James, chapter 2 and verse 12. What is his standard in the judgment? The Bible says, So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. You see, the standard of God's judgment is the law of liberty. Or we can say it's the law that gives us freedom. Now, we are not saved by God's law. We learned that last, the previous night. We are saved by grace alone. Only by the grace of God can we be saved. And in the judgment, God does not weigh our good deeds against our bad deeds. No, it's not like that. We are accepted because of Christ's righteousness. We are accepted on the basis of His righteousness alone. It's not about us. We cannot save ourselves by our works. And it's through His righteousness that we can pass this judgment and be guilt-free. It's through His righteousness, friends, that we can win in this judgment. You see, friends, when Christ accepts us and when we, accepts, we accept Christ, He leads us to obedience. He leads us to keep His law. And obedience really is the evidence of a changed life. Obedience is the evidence that our faith is genuine, that we have been saved by God, that we have experienced His grace. And the basic question in the judgment that will be asked is this, has this person accepted the saving grace of Christ? Is this acceptance evidenced by a changed relationship to the law? Is the attitude of this person one of rebellion or one of obedience? You see, friends, only those who are saved by grace, only those who experience His righteousness can say with David in Psalms chapter 40, verse 8, I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. You see, friends, those who truly love God's law will be hurt when they break God's law because they realize that they are breaking God's heart. Deep within your hearts, they have chosen the way of obedience, not the way of rebellion. And you see, Jesus and His law are inseparable. You cannot separate Jesus and His law. To willfully disobey God is to willfully wound Him. It's to willfully 
hurt him. And so friends, as we learn about this judgment, we realize that today, even right now, we need to get our lives right. We cannot delay it anymore. We cannot put it off till tomorrow. Because friends, we are not promised tomorrow. Tomorrow may never come. What are the things in your life that you need help with today? What are the things that you need to correct? And friends, it's only by God's grace and His strength that you can overcome. But today, will you say in your heart, Lord, I love you. Cover my sins with your righteousness. Forgive me of my rebellion. Take away my desire to disobey. I choose now to be your obedient child. Friends, indeed, we are living in the time of judgment. And I hope you see that. I hope you realize that God is judging us today. Just before He comes, Christ needs to judge our lives to determine if we are ready for His kingdom. And friends, my question for you today is, will you accept Jesus into your life? Will you accept His righteousness to cover your sins today? Will you ask Jesus to help you with the daily choices that you need to make? I hope and I pray that that is the decision that you will make. That that is the commitment that you will make even right now. I hope that you realize, friends, that time is short. Christ is coming soon and He is judging us even right now. And we need His help. We need His grace. We need His righteousness. So friends, if you have not accepted Jesus, if you have not received His grace, you have not been covered with His righteousness. Won't you reach out to Him today? Won't you tell Him that you need Him? Won't you invite Him into your heart and into your life even right now? so that He can save you, so that you can stand in the judgment, and so that you can be part of His kingdom when He comes again. Friends, I hope and I pray that that is your decision. And let us pray as we close, and let us ask God to truly help us. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to thank you so much for giving us this message. Lord, we see the need for judgment. And we know that today we are living in the time of judgment. You are investigating our lives. You are watching to see who are those that are worthy to be part of your kingdom. And Lord, we thank you because you have given us every opportunity to win in this judgment. You have given us every opportunity to be saved. And today, Lord, I pray that you would help us to reach out to you. Help us to be covered by your blood and by your righteousness. Lord, give us the grace that we need to live our lives differently, to be obedient, to delight in your law, and to live a new life in you. Lord, I pray for each person here that they would reach out to you, that they will receive that help that they need with the personal struggles that they have. And Father, I just pray that you would prepare us. Help us to be ready for your coming. And I pray that we will experience a new life today. Lord, we thank you so much for hearing and answering our prayers. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, thank you so much for joining us. I hope that that message was a blessing to you. And may we truly apply these things in our lives. May it not be just something we listen to or just knowledge that we receive, but let us truly apply these things. And may we truly experience His righteousness in our lives. Thank you so much for joining us once again, and may God bless each and every one of you. Have a good night. Wow, we really are living in serious times, aren't we? Thank you, Rain, for showing us that Jesus is that simple solution to help us to be ready today. All we need to do is accept Him. Friends, 
thank you again for joining us on Homeward Bound, brought to you by Advent Productions. We hope that you've been blessed by all the presentations so far. Don't forget that you can still get those booklets for free by just clicking on the link in the description below and fill out the details that are needed for us to send you that book free of charge. And if you wanted to study deeper into these subjects, you can go to bibleschools.com forward slash em forward slash pem and just take the free course that's offered there about the Bible and prophecy. I know that, th that you'll be enriched in your Bible study time. Now tomorrow, Rain will be sharing with us on a very interesting topic, signs of the times. How can we discern the signs that we see today? What does the Bible say about all of this? I hope that you'll join us again tomorrow for this most exciting study. Until then, may God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you at the same time on Homeward Bound. <music>